Um, scissoring can absolutely be the main course. It could be the sex act that gets someone off. Uh, it could be something that is just to sort of get things going. It can be done over clothes, under clothes, and even folks that don't have vulvas can enjoy. Welcome to Honey Do Me, a podcast that goes into the bedroom and beyond. Hosted by Emma Norman and Cass Anderson. Here at Honey Do Me, we don't have all the answers. So we chat with experts, educators, and badass change makers to get them. We are here to remind our listeners and ourselves that what we're going through is normal, that we are worthy of love and pleasure, and that we are all in this together. So tell us, honey, how do you do you? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? Welcome to your favorite podcast. <laughs> That's how that should be our new intro. Yeah. And welcome to your favorite podcast. Well, it's my favorite podcast. Gosh, my microphone is having a bitch fit. God, I'm I'm better. I'm better. How I'm are also, you? I'm good. How are you? I feel like you've had a good week. In some ways, yes. I want to know why. <laughs> I got a new vibrator. Ooh, okay. This okay. is my favorite thing. It... We all know I love the clitoral stimulating uh-huh. vibrators, like the sucking ones. Right. Okay. But this one, which was recommended to me on one of our tick, somebody commented on one of our TikTok videos. Okay. Our TikTok videos. I'm such an old person. <laughs> our TikToks and said, you have to try this. Like this blows the one that I was talking about out of the water. Uh-huh. So it's the Balesa BuzzFeed Air Vibe. Okay. Um, it comes in a really cute little like, clamshell package. Do you go and on? It is a C-shaped vibrator, which we actually talk about with the guest in this episode. But oh so it is both like an internal vibrator. Uh-huh. The bulb is actually pretty big. I was going to say, so does it have a bulb on the it's part like that a, goes inside? It, so it's like a regular, like the bulb on the end of like a vibrator. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like hefty. <laughs> she hefty. She hefty. Oh, um, gosh. And then it's got the sucking clitoral it's stim- sucking on the you didn't outside. tell me that yeah it's not just a vibrator on both Holy sides it's the clitoral shit. sucking on the outside and then the vibration oh my on the god. inside oh my god holy shit i thought it was just the whole thing vibrated no no no, no. and there's different buttons so one adjusts like the sucking intensity and the other one adjusts the vibrating intensity oh. holy shit okay so it's a c-shaped vibrator which it like so it literally like hooks on to you uh-huh which sounds scary it's not um but it adjusts really well it's got this like weird like flexi middle yeah. thing it's mm-hmm. so cool so i put it on and i'm gonna be honest the buttons were a little hard to like navigate when uh-huh. you're in the moment because okay. they're a little hard to find it was my first time using it whatever mm-hmm. i'm sure what? I'll get that right whatever. um <laughs> and right away i was just impressed i was <laughs> Uh, giving rave reviews. Yeah, this is craftsmanship. <laughs> Craftswomanship. <laughs> so can I ask a personal question? Of course. Are you moving it at all, moving yourself at all, or do you just stick it in and just let it do its job? stay there like the damn pillow princess you were <laughs> born, <laughs> born to, to be. be. Like, it just stays. I'm going to be honest. I was actually, like, standing when I put it in, and okay. then I just ended up staying standing. Oh, so you had yeah. a standing? Did you have a standing I had a... Did you fall to your knees, fall into a heap? I was ready. It was, yes. So I was yes, standing and it did not, like, it wasn't even close to coming out of me. So it was definitely fully hands-free, except for okay. the buttons aspect. Uh-huh. So honestly, I just, if I were giving like a blow job or going down on someone, oh. like this would make that experience you are Honestly, selling... if there was a penis in my mouth, though, I'd be a little scared about like <laughs> crunching my teeth down. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm thinking I know, through it. I know. In the moment. You've got to think through. <gasps> I can just picture like. <laughs> I'd have to have one of those things they put in at the dentist to like make sure yeah. you keep your teeth open. I have a you clench mouth. your teeth when you orgasm. <laughs> if you bite down. I fucking did with this one. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Explain. So the, the orgasm. Holy shit. Let's just say it was the longest <sighs> orgasm I have ever had. Like this wow. was 
long. Like, you know that part right before the orgasm that's like yes. fucking amazing? Yes. And then it, it tends to go away pretty fast into the orgasm. Yeah. That part stayed for so <laughs> Don't fucking point at me. long. <laughs> I love so that. long S- stayed like that before yeah it was okay. that before for a really long wow time and I don't know how my body was able to not have an orgasm but this magic little toy just wow. blew my wow. waters out of me Ew. <laughs> I don't know I, don't, I, was, I, don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say blew me out of the water and then I thought I could make a joke I didn't squirt <laughs> okay just to clarify wow i'm so happy for yeah. you and i think you've sold me at least on i this. highly recommend it i mean Belessa has deals all the fucking time so just uh-huh. check i will say it took two months to get to me oh um, really? it was back ordered for a really long time i don't think it's oh. back ordered anymore okay so you wouldn't have to wait like i did <laughs> but it was bomb highly recommend i think it would be such a fun partner toy like i was saying when you're doing yeah. other things like Mm-hmm. Holy shit, this thing would rock your world. Rock your world. Send yeah. you sailing. I don't so know. it's it's been a good week. Been a good week. And <laughs> that it's made get, up for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get even better for everyone else. Mm-hmm. Because today, oh, this episode, we are talking about scissoring. scissoring. Ah. I was very excited. And so who do we have? We have Lisa Finn from Babeland, mm-hmm. and holy shit. Yes, such a great, great, great episode. Uh, <laughs> we go into all that. We are both very curious about scissoring, scissoring. learning how to do it efficiently, efficiently effectively, yes. to completion. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, we figured out some, some ways to do it. Yeah, uh, we are prepared. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. So enjoy this with Lisa. We sure did. Yes. We'll see you on the other side. Yep. Bye. Bye. Hello. Hi. Uh, My name is Lisa, and I am the brand manager for Babeland. Um, If anybody listening to this doesn't know what Babeland is, we are a feminist-owned and operated sex toy shop. Queer founded, also important to say, uh, where we focus on not only getting you the physical tools, i.e. sex toys, products, everything like that, Um, for the sex life that you're looking for, but also the information. Uh, So we do virtual events, we do seminars, we do workshops. Everyone that works at any of our locations is trained in sex education. Um, So we are just all about making it accessible and empowering to talk about sex. Um, I have been with the company for over five years now, Uh, but before that I was a peer sex educator for a queer youth crisis center. Um, so I have been talking about doing the deed for quite some time. <laughs> so is Babeland primarily online then, or do you have stores that are like physical stores? We do have physical stores. Oh, uh, so we have two in Manhattan, one in Brooklyn, and one out in Seattle, Washington. Uh, the Seattle one was our flagship store. That's where everything started. It was a little co-op back in 1993. They wanted a safe space for women and queer folks to shop without uh feeling like they had to like go behind a beaded curtain in the back of a video store and Mm -hmm. get eyed up and down by somebody in a trench coat. Like they did not want that experience. And our stores to this day, it feels more like you're walking into like a boutique than a place that would sell sex toys. But Hey, guess what? We We do. do. So I love that. I feel like at least from my experience or my own understanding, sex toy shops can be really, really intimidating. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the ones that I've walked into when I was like, 18 getting a gag gift or something I was like oh my god like get me out of here I'm scared well we want to get into scissoring and we would love if you could give us a definition of what scissoring is yeah absolutely um so scissoring is sort of a colloquial term for tribidism or tribbing um that is specifically speaking to folks with vulvas it's when two folks with vulvas go ahead and put those vulvas together uh, to grind and to rub and to get each other off or to experience sexual pleasure from that sensation. Um, Scissoring could be a way to refer to that whole act, no matter what position you're in, but scissoring mainly alludes to the position of legs, legs coming together as though you were putting two scissors with the, I guess, the apex of the scissors mm-hmm. clashing against one another, which, why would you do that with two sharp objects? I don't know. <laughs> why would you do it with legs? Feels great. Feels mm-hmm. great. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like at least the way I've heard scissoring talked about in the past is that it's a mythical type mm-hmm. of thing and that it's really just in porn or that real people don't scissor. Can you go into that a little bit? First of all, real people absolutely do scissor. I think the thing, the reason why it sort of feels like it's so mythical is because it is so prevalent as like the main sex act in lesbian porn. I'm doing air quotes there because um, when I think of using the term lesbian porn, it is porn that is by lesbians for lesbians, um, more open to like the WLW community, queer folks, queer folks with vulvas. Um, and not everybody does that, and that's not the only way that it works. Um, scissoring, as it's shown in porn, is very much so for the pleasure of the third party and not for the pleasure of the performers, which is really what most porn is. Um, it's not about the performers getting off. It's about getting the person that's watching the performers off. Um, so it is very, very theatrical in many ways that it's done on screen. Um, with that being said, it's not necessarily just that, you know, two people sort of like up like crabs on their all fours with their vulvas mashing together in like a, a violent <laughs> fury, although it absolutely can be that in real life. There are so many other positions and ways that it can be done that are definitely more attuned to the bodies of those who are doing it rather than it being uh, a performance for entertainment. Um, so maybe not everybody does it like they see it in porn. And that could be the reason why people think that that's just not how it does, uh, how it goes. Cause they think, Hey, that's uncomfortable. Or that is an acrobatic feat. The likes of which my abdomen could never handle. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Absolutely. So I remember I enjoy watching lesbian porn if I'm masturbating. And I remember finding out or hearing that scissoring was fake and for porn and not something that felt pleasurable. And that like ruined lesbian porn for me, like thinking I could get off on that. Cause I was like, they're not even having fun though. Like what if they don't actually like it? So are there any other misconceptions that we have around scissoring? Cause you're saying that yes, it can be enjoyable. So are there any other misconceptions that we have about it? Yeah, um, I'm actually, I'm going to take a step back to what Mm -hmm. you just said about like the performers and porn and everything. Um, Can those folks be having a great time? Can they be getting off? Yeah, absolutely. But when it comes down to it, they are performers, they are performing, it is a job. Uh, Don't feel like you can't enjoy that entertainment for what it is, entertainment, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, We watch movies and TV shows where, you know, people turn into vampires and (laughs) fly off into the night and all of that. And it's like, they aren't really doing that, but we're enjoying it for (laughs) entertainment purposes. So whether or not it's something that feels realistic to you, you can still enjoy it. Um, Thank you for that. Appreciate it. (laughs) Oh, and I just completely sidelined and forgot what your actual question was. No, you're fine. I was just asking if there's any other misconceptions around scissoring. Yeah. um, That it is uncomfortable that it is just for folks with vulvas um and that that it has to be a a prelude to something else um scissoring can absolutely be the main course it could be the sex act that gets someone off uh it could be something that is just to sort of get things going to be done over clothes under clothes um and uh even folks that don't have vulvas can enjoy that idea of sort of like rubbing genitals together in a way that doesn't include penetration. Um, This is referred to as outer course. Mm -hmm. Uh, So no matter what someone's genital structure is, they can absolutely enjoy this. Um, We think about tribidism and scissoring specifically uh, as something that's more so uh, something that queer women uh, or queer folks do um, without there being a penis present, but that absolutely doesn't have to be the case. Trans women can absolutely scissor. Folks with penises can absolutely scissor. And I would love for you to really quickly define what tribidism is, because that's a new term to me. Yeah. So tribidism is uh, basically what you would define scissoring as, which is the act of uh, rubbing two vulvas together for the sensation of sexual pleasure. I have two questions. The first one, I guess, is kind of a clarification slash resource question because you talked about lesbian porn as porn made by lesbians for lesbians. Can you give some 
suggestions for that. And then I want to get into positions a little bit more and like the actual specifics. Yeah. So I don't know if I would define these companies as lesbian per se, because I know that uh, the folks that work on these productions are more in the realm of queer as a, a more sort of umbrella, uh, but definitely for things that have like woman on woman that are actually like by queer folks, for queer folks, uh, Pink and White Productions is a really good one. The Crash Pad series is another really great one. Um, what it comes down to is if you want to make sure that you're getting the right porn, make sure that you're paying for it. Um, definitely when it comes down to ethics, a lot of times if you're seeing free porn, uh, there's a good chance that it was stolen from another website. Uh, these folks aren't being compensated for their time and for their performance for their work. Uh, so definitely make sure that you are paying for your porn. You'll also definitely get higher quality porn that way as well. <laughs> and really quick, I've never paid for porn. I've used Belessa mm -hmm. and I've liked that free website. How much does porn go for? <laughs> How much are you paying for like good porn? <laughs> It depends. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some sites where you can like pay per view, like it's uh -huh. like a rental, like it's like, oh, okay, two ninety nine. <laughs> you get this 30 minute thing. Uh -huh. And then once you watch it, you're done or you get it for 24 hours. Like, uh, I don't know, like a blockbuster. Yeah, thing. like yeah. an Amazon Prime movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are websites where you can subscribe, you know, you could buy X amount of movies for how much, or you could do a monthly thing where it gets you everything on the site, like a Netflix situation. Um, it really comes down to how much you're looking to watch. Is it a promotional thing? Uh, are you paying for a subscription or just a one-time thing? Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, you can go anywhere from two or three bucks for a movie to, like, hundreds of dollars for an elite subscription. So it's really what you're willing to put forward into the world. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Good gauge. But erotica is usually free. Just oh, throwing that out there. But options. Options. Options for all price points. Mm-hmm. So positions. Yeah, we really like to get into the specifics of positions because for us, we can talk about the generals all day, but then when we get into the moment, it's like, oh my fucking God, like what mm -hmm. do I oh, do? Oh, the generals. I thought you said the genitals. We oh. can get to the genitals all day. <laughs> Believe me. The, yes. the oh, overall, the big ideas. Yes. But like it's in the moment and those little tiny specific things that like I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So that's what we really try and solve. Mm -hmm. do so you have like start with that yeah because the <laughs> only one that i'm thinking of is what you're talking about like the two scissors apex. meeting at the apex yeah <laughs> yeah um i'm going to apologize to those of you who are tuning in right now you are about to hear me say the word leg like 47 times in a <laughs> okay. row um there is no way to talk about positioning with scissoring without saying the word leg over and over and over, and over. And over again. Okay. Um, maybe I'll throw in the word limb just for fun. <laughs> just for uh, fun. Really quick, I realized, how do you prep for scissoring? Because I feel like stretching mm -hmm. would be really important um, if we're going to be talking about legs so much. Could we cover that really quick first? Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You're making a really, really fantastic <laughs> point. Um, there are, like I said, some of these moves and positions do require uh, a little bit more finesse, balance, core strength, leg strength even. Um, but that's not to say that any of these things can't be modified. Um, definitely, you want to make sure that you're comfortable. Uh, you don't want to be focusing on not getting a Charlie horse while you're focusing oh on gosh. getting you or your partner off. Mm -hmm. um, Stretching can definitely help. Doing any hip opening exercises can really help as well. Um, if you are like me and you are blessed with the most thunderous of thighs uh, and you are not going to be using those to your advantage, which I will get to in a little bit, um, hip opening exercises can be really great. Uh, you can also um, sort of help out with that with pillows. Um, I always like to recommend the Liberator pillows, which they are um, literally pillows that are made for sex. Um, actually, if you'll allow me to stop my video for a second, I have one yes. in the corner. Yes, please, uh, please. I'm wearing embarrassing boxer shorts. You're, so you're good. <laughs> so this is a Liberator. This is um, an example of one of the Liberators. It is a okay. wedge. Oh, Okay. So these are designed specifically for sex. So they're nice and squishy, but they hold their shape. Yeah. Um, think of it like 
uh, a memory foam mattress that doesn't have the memory part of it. It's just mm -hmm. really soft, but it'll spring right back. This is really good for um, sex because it won't lose its shape uh, and it's still comfortable. It's not like you're working on one of those like Jimbery. Yeah, <laughs> that's mats. exactly what I right. thought of. <laughs> I know that's what I was going to say. Like if you're listening to this and you can't see it, it does look like a tumble mat that you would have had in gymnastics, but yeah. smaller and black. Yeah. And black. And it's nice and velvety. This mm -hmm. part zips off. It's also, um, it's got a waterproof layer, uh, nice. which is great, especially um, if your scissoring uh, leads to the other wonderful S word, which is squirting. Absolutely. Uh, I would definitely recommend this. Uh, I will talk about how to use it um, throughout, but the Liberator Wedge Pillows, they come in like a bunch of different sizes. That's their original one. Um, but that can really help by lifting up your hips so that your legs are able to open more. Um, when our hips are more elevated, naturally, we just sort of have everything fall open. Um, think of it like hanging off of the edge of a bed um, or how, and I'm sorry, but this helps people sort of get that in their head. Uh, when you're at the gynecologist and they tell you to scooch down so that your uh, ass yes. is sort of like hanging over the seat, it's that same that. idea of being able to open your hips up mm -hmm. wider. Um, but, you know, for more sexy reasons, unless you're a person <laughs> with a medical fetish. But, but medical I'm fetish. never low enough. Right. It's always, they it's have to tell me like three so times. So upset. And then my butt gets stuck. So I feel mm. like my butt's just like folding over <laughs> itself. And I'm like, this cannot be good for anyone. I'm sorry. I'm ripping really? your paper. I it off of that like sanitary, like paper stuff. And I'm like, oh no, my ass is just touching everything Everyone's that ass. anyone else's ass yeah. has ever touched before. So yep. upsetting. But... <laughs> So upset. I digress. <laughs> um, hip opening exercises, okay, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, your neck and your back, especially if you're going to be doing like craning positions. Um, a lot of folks don't think about this, but you know when you're sort of like your legs are the focus, you're probably going to want to look at your partner. So there's going to be a lot of like craning of your neck, um, maybe reaching of your arms. So just always stretching before sex, especially if it's going to be more vigorous sex definitely doesn't hurt. But the number one thing that I will say, make sure that you have it, make sure that you are ready to go before you participate in scissoring is lube. Okay. Um, yeah, lube. Love a lube. Yes, absolutely. Vaginal secretions are a thing. Wetness is a thing, but scissoring is all about friction. It's all about rubbing. And after a while, you know, sometimes our natural, our natural lubrication just isn't enough for that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we don't get as wet as we want to, regardless of how aroused we are. Um, if you're like me and you drink a shit ton of coffee, uh, if maybe you went out for drinks, if you haven't had enough water, if you're on an SSRI or another medication that can affect um, wetness, if you are near your menstrual cycle, if you are going through menopause, there are a thousand different reasons why um, someone might not get super wet that has nothing to do with how aroused they are aren't. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether or not you are someone that gets super wet, lube will make everything so much more pleasurable because that gliding sensation can really add another sort of like level to this. Um, additionally, if you are involving other body parts, like the thighs, anything like that, where you don't want to have to worry about, okay, well, is my wetness reaching this entire vicinity, mm -hmm. um, slapping on some lube can be really fantastic. If you're just going body to body and you're not using any toys, a silicone lubricant is really great because they're super, super long lasting. Uh, there's one called Uber Lube that actually has vitamin E in it. And I love that one because it makes your skin feel so, so soft afterwards, <laughs> which is really nice. Um, it also comes in like a really bougie glass bottle, which is like right. super cute to leave out on the nightstand. Mm -hmm. We've um, heard good things about that one. Toys, yeah. hmm? We've heard good things about that one. Oh yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, but if you are using toys, you're going to want a slick water-based lube. Um, the reason why you don't want to use silicone lube with sil silicone toys um, is that it just sort of uh, messes with the material, not in a dangerous science experiment way, but in a, if you dropped a hundred bucks on a nice silicone toy, you want to keep it feeling as nice as possible for right. as long as possible. Absolutely. Um, I would definitely recommend uh, any of the Sliquid line. Uh, they are fantastic, as well as Pure, P-J-U-R. Um, those are also just like super silky, super nice. 
the pure line um, feels uh, a little bit less like a gel and a little bit more like, I wouldn't really say an oil, but it's a lot thinner and a lot slicker, mm -hmm. uh, which can feel really great, um, especially if that slide, that glide is something that really feels sensational to you. So highly recommend lube. Um, use a lot of it. Don't be shy about it. <laughs> Uh, this is a lot of movement and having that slickness and having that cut down on friction is not only going to make everything feel a little bit more sensational, but it's also going to cut down on the amount of muscle work that you have to do because uh, uh -huh. you're not pushing against something that has <laughs> yeah. resistance. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up because in my head, I was thinking that the friction without lube was the goal of that type of movement. So the slipping and sliding does make sense. So especially if you're incorporating your legs. Yeah, you definitely, I mean, the sensation of like the rubbing and everything is definitely, I mean, it's, it's the key. You want to feel mm -hmm. the body is pressing against one another, um, but you don't want it to feel grippy where it feels like you're like sticking against one another. Um, you want everything to sort of feel like, like when you get a massage, you don't want a massage with dry hands right. where it's like pulling and tugging at your skin. You want a massage with some oil. You're still, it's the sensation of the massage that feels good, but you're not getting like grippy, sticky hands all over your skin. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect analogy. Yeah. Hate the grip stick. Yeah. Hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. So now we know how to prep for scissoring. Let's get into more positions for scissoring. I'm excited. Awesome. So let's start off with the classic scissor. Mm -hmm. um, I like to call this one, unsexily enough, I always think of this one as like the crab walk scissor because <laughs> okay. it just reminds me of like, you know, being on all fours uh, with your stomach facing the sky as though you're like walking like a crab. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea with this one is that uh, both folks would be on an even surface, be it a large bed, a couch, the floor, a table, whatever it is and you're sort of walking towards each other so that your legs are crossing uh, between one another. So um, one person, you know, I don't know how to describe this without showing it. I'm trying to do my best to be vocal. This is a podcast, <laughs> um, but the legs are sort of intertwined, mm -hmm. but still open so that the vulva is completely exposed. Okay. Um, at that point, you know, one person can sort of twist uh, so that, you know, you have one person that's a little bit more vertical, one person that's a little bit more horizontal, um, and then you match up the vulvas with one another. Um, the more clitoral contact that you can get, the better. Uh, and then it's either a sensation of rubbing by bowing your body up and down, so sort of using your elbows and your knees to sort of like go up and down or it's that sort of like coming together and pushing apart so again very much so elbows and knees a lot of engagement in the core on this one as well um, because you're really sort of focusing on moving those bodies together um, with any of these positions you know there are so many different ways to move once uh, the I'm going to keep on saying vulvas but again this is not just exclusive to folks with vulvas once the genitals are against one another, so you could do little circles, you could do a back and forth, you could do sort of like a mashing together. That's not a sexy way to put it. Um, <laughs> Collide. Just, just a clitoral collision. A, clitoral collision. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's, that's, my that's new, the name uh, of the episode. Band, by the way. Um, <laughs> sort of figuring out what feels good for you, not only with that contact of body to body, but again, keeping in mind the rest of your body as well. Cause you don't want to find the thing that feels really great for you, but you can only keep it up for about 30 seconds when you needed two minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so sort of taking it from there. Uh, another popular position would be missionary. Um, so having one person sort of elevate their hips for this, the person that's on the bottom can be really good because uh, they are sort of, again, opening up a little bit more. Second person climbs on top of them. Same thing with the sort of like crab walk one where the legs are intertwined so that the vulvas can meet. Okay. This one is really nice because the person that's on the bottom has the ability to sort of move by bucking their hips, whereas the person that's on top can rely on their whole body for that movement. So whether they're shifting completely up and down by sort of pushing against the surface and moving their body up and down almost like a, almost like a push-up, um, or that they can actually be rested against one another and sort of move together like one would in the missionary position if we're talking about vaginal penetration. 
Where, um, so with that second person, the one that's on top, like where is their body positioned in that? Like, are they still in that sort of like crab walk position, like you were saying, or are they like leaning over more? They're leaning over them. So okay. think about, um, the standard missionary position where it's like mm-hmm. face to face, um, except this time it's with legs open so that the vulvas can meet. Um, okay. this one very much so tends to be a lot easier for folks that are smaller bodied, um, just because of body shapes and everything like that with the lifting of the hips. Um, so for folks that are thicker, um, it might be better if one person does sort of lean back and is, um, sort of in either that crab walk or sitting position so that, uh, the hips are more open. Again, for folks like me that have bigger thighs, uh, sort of keeping everything open is going to sort of make modifications on these positions or find positions that really take advantage of that, uh, which is sort of the second half of this, which is that I know that scissoring is really this idea of the genitals bumping together, but thighs can really play a great part in scissoring. Put some lube on a thigh, have your thighs be the things, that are rubbing against one another's genitals, um, you have a lot more movement with that. Uh, It's a lot less precise. So you can sort of focus more on the movement and the motion rather than again, sort of like retaining that clitoral contact uh, to have that opportunity to move around more. Uh, Because there's a lot more surface area on our thighs than there are on our bulbas. And those positions that you, the two that we just talked about, work well with thigh movement? The traditional sort of porn scissor and crab Got walk it. one not so much mm-hmm. uh just because your thighs are going to be a little bit more tabletop right whereas with something where someone's sitting or laying down you have a lot more of a range of movement because you're not relying on your hands and feet to keep you sort of stable you mm-hmm. can have a lot more movement to allow yourself to fall on the bed rest on your ass rest on your back rest on your tummy whatever it is, um, by not having to engage all those muscles at once. This sounds like such a workout. (laughs) The crab walk one sounds like a butt workout, like for real. (laughs) That's, I mean, that's one of the reasons why so many people are like, that's not a real thing. Um, because there are often people that'll give, give it a shot and they're like, Oh, this is, this is a lot. But there are also folks that that's the whole allure of it is really, just focusing on that. There are folks that definitely have like sex that I would consider something that you could put in like the CrossFit games. Um, (laughs) But that's, that's what they're into. That's what they do. And there is nothing but respect coming from me, a very lazy person. Yeah. (laughs) Pillow princess herself. I respect that. (laughs) (laughs) So if you're going to start incorporating more of the thighs, like how does that work positioning wise. So if you're, I think I'm still a little confused on the missionary position and I know it's hard because we can't like sign it with our hands. (laughs) Um, but like how are the legs intertwined or not intertwined in the missionary position? Does that make sense? Yeah. So thinking about missionary, a lot of times it's that the person on the bottom has their legs open, like in a mm-hmm. V, whereas the other person has their legs together, like an I in between that V. Okay. So imagine that you have two Vs and instead of stacked one right on top of the other, you have one leg on the inside of the V Got it. on each person. Okay. So, um, for, for the clip of the video that does exist. <laughs> yes. yes. That um, clarified it perfectly. Yeah. So for some folks, again, having that tilt, you're sort of crossing those together so that you get a little bit more of the, the <laughs> yes. sensation mm-hmm. where, yeah. Correct. So the apexes are laid on top of each other. Exactly. <laughs> again, keeping that, that sweet, sweet clitoral contact. Sweet, sweet. Um, yes. Yeah. Are there any ways to incorporate more furniture into scissoring? Like we talk about different positions with like penetrative sex, about like using the couch and using the chair, you know, so is there any way to incorporate more like furniture with scissoring? Absolutely. Actually, um, scissoring on a chair is a, another really great option. Um, having the person that's sitting down, like the person with the ass against the cushion, Mm -hmm. having them open up their hips, even if they wanted to hold up their leg, 
uh, to really open up and then the other person can straddle them but again with their legs open around the other person's body um, this can have uh, a lot of opportunity to use especially if you're at the edge of the couch or the chair if you have an armrest uh, the second person can sort of put their leg over that armrest or over the edge of the couch or whatever it is and it'll keep it up a little bit more. So again, it's not necessarily, you know, I'm holding my own leg up this entire time or engaging those muscles to just full on rock head this shit. Um, <laughs> you can keep and use the arm of the couch to sort of elevate that leg to again, keep the hips open um, and allow for that movement together. Mm -hmm. Gripping the back of the couch over someone's shoulders um, so that you sort of have something to pull on to move. Uh, anything that you're using to sort of assist in the movement of your body can be a really good way to, again, not have to focus on the muscles that we maybe aren't really focusing on at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so allowing yourself to create these different shapes. If you've got throw pillows, stick them under places, find a way that works. Um, and really, again, experimenting because your shape of your body and your body's ability as well as the shape of your partner's body and your partner's mobility will have a lot to do with what works and what doesn't in these positions. Mm -hmm. I love those suggestions. Yeah, that sounds more supportive yeah. too. Like if that is something that is needed, mm -hmm. that sounds like very supportive. Because you want a way to spice up every position you know you don't want to just like cycle through the two ways that you know how to do it so implanting or planting more ideas <laughs> implanting them <laughs> planting more ideas about how to switch it up is always fun and spicy which i feel like leads to the next way to spice it up which is using toys so how can we use some toys with scissoring yeah so going back to the wonderful wonderful pornographic stereotype would be a double-ended dildo. Yes, um, I've seen those. So a stereotype in uh, women-on-women -women porn? Absolutely. Can it feel fantastic? Absolutely. Um, so a double-ended dildo could be really great for this uh, if you sort of wanted to have really nice deep penetration alongside this scissoring. This is actually um, one where having sort of your facing towards each other uh, almost like in that crab walk position mm -hmm. or on your butts in that same position. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have everything elevated. Um, another position that I was going to talk about is that same sort of crab walk one, but you allow your ass to hit the surface. Okay. Uh, so you're really focusing with your arms on the movement and sort of grinding into one another. Um, you're going to get a lot less of that sort of heavy motion because your butt is going to have traction against the couch, the bed, the table, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But this is a really good position to incorporate a double dildo in if you both want that deep penetration. The reason why I say deep penetration is because in order to get that contact between the genitals of the two people's bodies, you really got to meet in the middle of that dildo. It's like a lady in the trance <laughs> spaghetti <laughs> Um So if that isn't your jam, uh -huh. uh, using... Uh, a vibrator between the two, um, a magic wand. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So if uh, folks that are tuning in don't know what that is, um, highly suggest that you go find out immediately. But <laughs> it is a vibrator that has a super, super strong motor. Um, it almost looks like a microphone, has a long handle with a semi-rounded head. It's really nice because the reach on the handle makes it really easy to sort of get in between the two bodies without having to have a whole hand sort mm -hmm. of uh, holding something within there. Mm -hmm. um, wearable vibrators are really fantastic for this as well. Uh, the WeVibe Sync Chorus is a wearable vibrator that was originally designed to be worn during vaginal penetration. Um, but I find that that is way too limited thinking for a toy like that. Um, so it's a C-shaped toy, and the way that it works is it sort of, I don't want to say clips on because it doesn't like clamp, uh, but you sort of slide it um, around the body so it has a piece that goes internally, uh, hugs, hugging the G-spot, and then externally against the clitoris. Um, it's super adjustable, so you can actually make it be firm to the body so that it stays in place. Um, having that vibrator 
when you are grinding against your partner, when you're having that sensation of everything rubbing together, they're going to also feel that vibrator because it's where your clit is. So mm-hmm. that rubbing together can feel really nice for the person that's wearing it. They also get that stimulation against their G spot as well, which can feel fantastic. Um, it's also app and remote controlled. So if you wanted to, you know, have some foreplay with it, or if you were in the heat of the moment and you needed to go faster, but you don't want to like pull away and mess around with a button, you just grab the remote and start pressing or even squeeze it. It actually has a squeeze oh. remote, uh, which is really nice. Uh, if you are someone that, again, wants to focus on the important things and not finding the right button. <laughs> yeah. You literally just squeeze the remote and the tighter that you squeeze it, uh, the more vibration that you'll get. So oh definitely. Wow. Is that the that one that is... you have? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. I did just get one that's like a C-shaped vibrator, but. Oh, I want the squeeze. <laughs> I have a really quick question about the double-ended dildo. Um, is there something that stops it from going farther into one person than the other? Or does that is that not even a problem? Every time I've thought of a double ended dildo, I've pictured it like getting sucked one way more so than the other way, and maybe it being like awkward and painful. Well, there are ones that are very much so like here is a big long dong with two <laughs> heads to it. Yeah. Um, but then there are ones that are more poseable. Um, so there are ones that are meant to be sort of like harness free double dildos. Um, like the, uh, the fun factory share where it's actually designed that, um, it was originally designed for like strap play. It's not really so much. So a double dildo as it is a dildo that has another end. Um, so it has almost like a bean shape that goes into the wearer and then the phallic shape for the receiver. Um, that's a good way to sort of control, uh, but that's going to be a little bit less focusing on the tripping and a little bit more just strap on penetrative play. Um, there are also double ended dildos that are more poseable. So um, you can actually sort of like bend it to have uh, sort of like a, not, not really a stopping point, but just an angle yeah. mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. it wouldn't travel up into the body further. So, um, but it's really just going to depend on, you know, really the bodies, how much length you have on the dill and how it's positioned. Mm -hmm. Um, so it can be something that is very specific to each person and sort of an agreement of, well, if you want to take more, you have to make sure that you're going in deeper and Mm -hmm. that I'm pulling out a little bit, but it, it will take a little bit of finesse for sure. Gotcha. I like that you called it a dill. It sounds like a spice. (laughs) Me and my dill. (laughs) I really appreciate that. Very, uh, very often do we just accidentally give nicknames to things. One of my coworkers uh, will constantly nickname genitals as Jenny's. Jenny's. <laughs> and uh, that. at that point, I always get a uh, eight six seven five three zero nine stuck in my head. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> Jenny's number. You gotta call it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not sixty nine. But... <laughs> it's sixty nine. <laughs> I have a couple of logistics questions that are coming up for me around penises specifically. Mm-hmm. Are there any modifications to the positions that you already talked about that if there's maybe like, I guess I want to talk about if there's one penis involved first, um, mm-hmm. are there any modifications that we should be considering or for the most part, do those stay pretty the same? It really depends. Um, for folks that, uh, want to sort of have the sensation be more of like a gliding body to body. A lot of folks will tuck and uh, wear like either um, a gaffing pair of underwear or a regular pair of underwear. Again, keeping in mind that uh, this can feel really great with clothes on. Um, I feel like people dismiss the dry hump as something that you do like in in your younger (laughs) days or whatever it is. But like, Mm -hmm. There's a reason why everyone was so excited to do it, and that's good. Love a dry hump. Right? It's, um, it's so fucking good, and nobody talks about it. And it, then I ended up feeling like really shameful about it. And so I really appreciate you talking about it because it's something I'm I passionate talk about, about. Sex for a living, <laughs> and I constantly recommend the dry hump. Yes. All the time. Listen, if there is something that feels good for you, there's no like maturity or levels to any kind of sex. Like that idea of like, 
sort of the baseball bases where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, first bases, make it out, second bases, you touch the titty, blah, blah, blah. No, that gives this idea that there are tears to sex, take that, throw it away, think about sex as a buffet. Um, and, you know, grinding with your pants on, definitely part of that <laughs> mm-hmm. menu. Oh, I love that. Um, but back to penises. Yes. Uh, if you wanted to, again, if they wanted to tuck, if they wanted to have it like sort of out of the way so that it's more of that sensation of rubbing rather than mm-hmm. having the penis really super be involved. Um, if not, flipping the penis up against the body. Uh, most of the um, nerve endings on a penis are located either at the tip or not either, both at the tip, as well as along the underside. So the underside has all these wonderful hot spots, like the raphe, which is a seam that goes from the t- um, from the base of the head of the penis down the shaft, and it actually goes around the balls and onto the perineum, which is the space between the genitals and the butthole. Um, and then the frenulum, which is a little bit of webbing right underneath the head of the penis where it meets the shaft. Um, If someone has been circumcised, that webbing may have been taken off during circumcision, but it's not the webbing itself that we're really concerned about. It's the nerve endings right underneath. Uh, So those are all on the underside of the penis. So having the penis sort of flipped up against the body so that rubbing is taking place along those hot spots can feel really, really fantastic. This is another reason why you're definitely going to want to use a lot of lube um, to make sure that that sensation, again, does not have that grip that's sort of pulling against the tender skin of the penis and pulling against um, the lips of the vulva. You really want this to sort of be seamless to be as pleasurable as possible. I think those are great modifications. And my other question is around like two penis owners in a situation. Is there a situation having sex? (laughs) Um, (laughs) I sound like a grandma in a situation. (laughs) Um, Are there any additional modifications or like what kind of positions would work for two penis owners? It's really a matter of, again, it's this idea of outer course. It's this idea of just that genital rubbing with no intent of penetration. Mm -hmm. Um, So really it's as with any sex act, it should just be however, however this feels good for you and your body. Um, Again, it's just that movement of genitals touching uh, with sort of the legs wrapped around one another. That's really Mm -hmm. the, the two key points to scissoring are genital on genital legs. Legs. (laughs) Legs. The only necessary ingredient. Yes, absolutely. I was wondering if we could talk about like a few more ways to incorporate hands or what to be doing with your hands during this time if you're not in a position where you're actively having to support your body. (laughs) So this is the exact opposite of that, but it is still something to do with your hands is to restrict them. Um, Having someone tied down Uh, Using a spreader bar is great for this, or if you have like under the bed restraints or if you have a four poster bed, whatever it is, to just completely starfish somebody out, um, that could be a really good way to, again, make sure that their hips are open. What's a spreader Uh, bar? I don't know. A spreader bar is um, a long, like usually it's metal. It's going to be usually like about, I guess, like four feet. I'm really bad at math, (laughs) Uh, but it's essentially, uh, they're usually adjustable, but you want it to be as long as someone's legs can spread. Uh, And then it has two little clips on the end that you can attach uh, cuffs to. So essentially once your arms are like that, you can't move them in. Uh, Or once your legs are are spread, you can't move them in. They're attached to the two ends of this bar. Um, Very popular in BDSM. Uh, Folks will also use, um, like I said, under the bed restraints, which uh, use the mattress as that stopping point. So you can't pull your arms any further because the straps that are attached to the cuffs are underneath the mattress and you're sort of resisting against yourself. Um, these are just really good ways to, uh, have that spread out restraint. If you don't have something that you could tie to, whether it's on the bed post or the bed frame, or, you know, if you're using a kitchen table against the legs, whatever it is. But the idea is, is that once you're bound, you can't move inward. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) I enjoyed that suggestion. Um, I've never heard of a spreader bar. So Mm -hmm. it has a spot for your hands. Does it have anything to connect your legs to, like if you tied your legs and you pulled the rope all the way up to the top or would you of the just spreader have bar, two? 
or would you just have two for your legs to keep you starfished? Probably, you would probably have two unless you were going to go like full St. Andrew's cross, which is the <laughs> X with the cuffs on the top and the bottom. Oh, okay. uh, but that you usually use upright, so might be a little bit difficult for someone. They'd have to like, again, sort of like a rocket situation, <laughs> keep their leg up in the air while they're sort of hopping against your body. A spreader bar, you could definitely do while you're laying down, which is going to make it much easier for the top. Mm-hmm. Talk, talk about CrossFit games at yeah. that point. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Um, yeah, Again, I, like I, I don't want to say that it can't be done or that nobody's done it because there's going to be someone listening to this podcast that's like, hi, Babeland, um, <laughs> Lisa. And you will get corrected. I love it. <laughs> Everyone, people are so crafty. You never know. <laughs> are there any other suggestions that you have for hands or is that kind of your favorite one? Um, I would just say wherever else you want your hands to go, <laughs> you know, um, a reach around. We love a good tushy touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, nipples, necks, holding somebody down with your hand, um, playing into power dynamics with this as well. Um, you know, scissoring very much so it feels like it's a mutual thing because of the way that you're sort of keeping your bodies in sync, mm-hmm. uh, but definitely playing with some Tom sub play within this, um, sort of controlling, edging um, within that could be really good too, like giving yourself that moment to pull away. Um, and sort of leave your partner on edge. Although, because it is such sort of a mutual sensation, you'll probably be edging yourself. (laughs) Um, But really with your hands in a lot of these positions, you're relying on them to sort of help with the support and the movement of your body. Mm -hmm. Um, So really wherever it feels comfortable um, and allowing yourself also the break from the constant movement of genitals. Um, I know a lot of folks think like, Once you start going, that's it. You got to keep on going and pushing through, but allowing yourself these breaks, whether it's intentional through edging like that, I'm going to pull back to sort of make you want it more. Or if you're just pulling back to take a breath, to do something else, to explore another part of the body and come back to it, um, definitely doesn't need to be a marathon unless you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask is like, when are you done or is there a goal? And like, can you orgasm? Like, I didn't know if there's more of a sequence to this position? The last question is an absolute yes. You absolutely can orgasm from this act. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's a lot of genital simulation. It's a lot of, you know, touch and a lot of focus on the clitoris. Um, And that sensation can feel really, really great for a lot of folks. Um, For some folks, they can experience uh, a tandem orgasm, which is fantastic. Maybe one person comes before the other one does. Uh, And at that point, it's a matter of, you know, is this still comfortable? Are we going to move on to something else to get you off? And that also just, it comes down to communication uh, with you and your partner and figuring out, okay, well, I feel like this thing is done. Are you okay if we move on to something else or what would feel good for you right now? Um, You know, very much so being able to incorporate that into dirty talk with, where do you want me now? Do you want me to use my mouth? Do you want me to use my hands? Do you need me to keep going? Checking in with your partner as you should be without any, um, you should be throughout any kind of sex, uh, Mm -hmm. whether it's scissoring or penetration or just high-fiving each other, whatever (laughs) it is, you need to continue uh, to make sure that you're checking in with each other throughout. Especially now, post-COVID, I don't want to high-five you if you don't want it. Mm -mm. (laughs) You don't want to touch my hands. Do you feel like there's anything we didn't touch on with scissoring that would be really important to bring up since I'm coming from a spot of still not knowing, you know, having never done it? Yeah, um, I would say to allow yourself time to experiment with it. Um, Again, props, using pillows, using couches, getting into different positions, um, allowing yourself to be lazy with it if you want to, uh, you know, have your ass against the bed, move slowly, really depend on movement of like laying on top of one another, um, switching positions throughout, uh, you know, allowing yourself again, that breath to be like, all right, I need a minute or my arms beginning to hurt. Can we do this a different way? Um, our bodies are spectacular. Uh, and sometimes we can surprise ourselves. Uh, but also sometimes we need to be able to say, oh, okay, my foot fell asleep. Let's change it up. Um, Again, allowing yourself to not feel like you need to be like direct clit to clit the entire time. 
experiment with, you know, grinding against thighs, grinding against tummies, uh, grinding against whatever feels good to you in these positions. Um, and if it's not for you, it's not for you, but it's definitely worth giving a shot. Well, beautiful closer. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Could you let our listeners know where to connect with you after the episode? Absolutely. Um, so you can get to me through Babeland's Instagram, and that is at Babeland underscore toys. Uh, we are also at Babeland underscore toys on Twitter. Um, and then if you want to reach out to me directly, it is events at Babeland.com. Um, that's just where our education team hangs out. We never made a separate email for it because... <laughs> In the in the before times, all of our education took place through events, so events at babeland.com. Um, and if you are in New York, uh, pop by one of the stores. I'm constantly at one of them. And come say hello. Are you impressed? Are you impressed or what? Are y'all going to run off and scissor? scissor. <laughs> are y'all about to open your legs and scissor? Your legs. I really want to get that hip opener pillow. Yeah, I'm a tight-hipped bitch. And, I think I uh, just sleep with that. Honestly. I know that sounds so relaxing. Yeah, it's not. It was nice and dense. Yeah, and I would love that. I get mm. Charlie horses so much as a mm. human. So if I was scissoring, it wouldn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried about my weak wrists, to be uh, honest, a lot of the time. So as soon as she was like, "Drop your butt," I was like, "Okay." And, and that's missionary. What I, I like. Do. Oh yeah, and you will be the one on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so, so much to Lisa for being on the episode today. And thank you to our listeners for sticking around. And if you enjoyed this episode, take a second and send it to someone that you love. Someone that you think is also interesting. Yes, someone you want to scissor. (laughs) Uh Someone you also think we could learn something from the episode is interested in scissoring. You know. You know. You know. Spread the love. Spread your legs. Spread those legs. And if you want to give us even more love. Head on over to Apple Podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe to Honey Do Me. If you leave us a written review, go ahead and leave the scissors leave the emoji scissors. because yeah. what else would you leave for this exactly. episode? Um, and tell us how much you love us because we, it's what we love want to hear. you. Oh, yep. And we love you. <laughs> Not my ego. Yep. And right. we'll see you next week. <laughs> next week. <laughs>